Oh, the humiliation! Starliner is not only grounded once again, but it has also plunged Boeing deeper into crisis, resulting in new financial losses. Additionally, NASA has just delayed the spacecraft's next flight due to a series of ongoing issues. Why hasn't it been cancelled? In contrast, New Shepard has successfully launched, but significant challenges are likely on the horizon. Meanwhile, Northrop Grumman has secured a nearly $2 billion contract from the Space Force. What does this mean for the industry? Let's explore in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's been nearly two months since the Starliner CFT-1 returned and there is currently no indication of when the next flight will occur. The ongoing delays surrounding Starliner are likely to persist and it comes as no surprise that these setbacks are resulting in financial losses for Boeing. The company, which the FAA has praised as the safety standard that SpaceX needs to meet, recently reported a $250 million loss related to the Starliner program. This announcement coincided with Boeing's decision under the leadership of new CEO Kelly Ortberg to continue the program despite facing significant criticism. The loss was attributed to issues surrounding the CFT-1 mission. In a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, Boeing stated, During the three months ended September 30th of 2024, we increased the reach-forward loss on the program by $250 million primarily to reflect schedule delays and higher testing and certification costs. Once again, the CFT-1 mission has not only caused schedule delays, but has also impacted Boeing's financial standing. This is merely one of several losses the company has incurred. As noted in the filing and updated last month, Boeing reported $125 million in losses in the second quarter of this year, preceding the launch of the CFT mission, likely stemming from delays prior to that event. In 2023, Boeing had already reported a total loss of $1.47 billion on Starliner, with the additional $125 million loss from the second quarter. That figure has risen to $1.6 billion US dollars. Now, with the new $250 million loss, <laughs> the total has increased to $1.845 billion. That's $1 billion. $845 million, people. However, Boeing does not appear to be ready to abandon ship. When questioned about the possibility of discontinuing fixed price programs like the Commercial Crew Program, Ortberg asserted, I don't think that's a viable option for us. Even if we wanted to, I don't think we can walk away from these contracts. Ortberg also made a rather curious statement, we're better off doing less and doing it better than doing more and not doing it well. Huh? This claim seems misguided, especially regarding Starliner, where doing less has not resulted in positive outcomes. In summary, Boeing and Starliner will continue to participate in NASA's program and are unlikely to abandon their efforts in the near future. As noted in NASA's previous update, while the Crew-10 and Crew-11 missions of Dragon have established their launch schedules and crew members, Starliner-1 remains in a state of uncertainty with the message, looking at windows of opportunity for a potential 2025 flight, pending certification and operational readiness. Originally, Starliner 1 was scheduled for no earlier than the second half of 2025, which will inevitably lead to increased financial losses for Boeing. The company could be on the brink of reaching a $2 billion loss or even more in the near future. Designed to support NASA, Starliner is increasingly resembling a financial black hole. These losses are contributing to a total project loss of $6 billion for Boeing in the third quarter. As a result, there are reports that union workers will soon vote on whether to sign a contract with the company or continue their six-week strike. This is understandable, as the company's financial struggles cast doubt on its future viability. Returning to Starliner, NASA has indicated that to launch official crew missions to the ISS, Boeing requires, of course, certification. However, following serious issues during the CFT mission, such as thruster malfunctions and a helium leak that left two astronauts stranded on the ISS, the likelihood of obtaining certification is lower than ever. 
Without certification, Boeing may need to conduct another crew flight test involving more astronauts willing to undertake this risky venture. If that occurs, completing the six crewed missions to the ISS, which NASA assigned with a budget of up to four and a half billion dollars, will become increasingly challenging. Keep in mind, we are nearing the end of 2024 and Boeing has about six years remaining to fulfill this requirement. At this point, even completing one mission a year seems overly ambitious. This situation highlights NASA's miscalculation in selecting and favoring Boeing a decade ago. In stark contrast, space SpaceX's Dragon has been operating consistently, enabling NASA to regain its autonomy in sending astronauts to the ISS, maintaining operations aboard the station, and recently facilitating the rescue of two Starliner astronauts. Perhaps if NASA had anticipated this outcome 10 years ago, they would have chosen differently. Now they are left to grapple with the consequences alongside their longtime partner. This obviously raises questions about the FAA's assertion that Boeing serves as the safety standard for SpaceX to meet. What standards are they referring to? Technical challenges, delays, or financial losses? The difficulties Boeing is currently experiencing seem to undermine the FAA's claims, indicating that the agency's evaluation criteria are inadequate. <sighs> okay, let's calm down a second here. It's worth noting that despite its influence, the FAA has delayed the Falcon rocket three times in three consecutive months. Additionally, they have significantly postponed the Starship Flight 5 schedule. Clearly, it may be time for this agency alongside Starliner, the spacecraft produced by its close associate Boeing, to reconsider its role in the aerospace industry. If you share this sentiment, please let me know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development development journey. With that in mind, let's now explore the New Shepard mission update, which promises to bring exciting new challenges. At 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time on October 23rd, Blue Origin successfully launched its uncrewed mission, NS-27, sending a New Shepard rocket capsule combination on a brief journey to suborbital space. This marks the 27th mission for this suborbital rocket. Although there are no crew members aboard NS-27, the mission carried 12 research payloads, 5 located on the booster, and 7 inside the capsule. Among the notable payloads were advanced navigation systems developed for both the New Shepard and Blue Origin's upcoming New Glenn rocket, as well as two LIDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging Sensors, designed for lunar operations. The rocket reached a maximum altitude of approximately 63 miles, or 101 kilometers, before returning for a landing around 7 minutes and 20 seconds later. Approximately three minutes afterward, the company's new crew capsule, the RSS Carmen Line, made a parachute landing in the West Texas desert. Following the flight, Blue Origin proudly announced, We just completed our 27th mission, debuting the second human-rated vehicle for the new Shepard program. The uncrewed verification flight sent 12 payloads to space and back, including tens of thousands of Club for Future postcards. Blue Origin's CEO Dave Limp added, This morning's New Shepard NS-27 flight not only debuted our second human-rated vehicle for the program, but also successfully sent 12 payloads to space and back. However, not everything went smoothly. The launch was delayed by two weeks. It was initially scheduled for the 7th of October, but attempts on the 7th and a subsequent date were both aborted due to hardware and GPS issues. This mission also marked the inaugural flight of the new New Shepard prototypes, including Booster 5 and the RSS Carmen Line capsule. Blue Origin previously stated, The vehicle features technology upgrades to enhance performance and reusability, an updated livery, and improved improved payload accommodations on the booster. They also noted that these enhancements expand flight capacity to better meet growing customer demand. Despite the successful launch, the aforementioned challenges indicate that Blue Origin and New Shepard still face significant obstacles ahead. The next launch date has yet to be announced, and it is uncertain whether there will be a crew on the subsequent mission. If the company does not act swiftly, it risks losing market share to emerging competitors. More importantly, Blue Origin is gearing up for its first orbital mission next month with New Glenn. This mission could play a pivotal role in determining the company's future. It'll be intriguing to see how they proceed. 
Now, let's turn our attention to a significant development, Northrop Grumman's recent contract award from the Space Force. The US Space Force has awarded Northrop Grumman a significant contract valued at $1.8 billion to produce two advanced warning satellites designed to detect missile threats, particularly those originating from the Northern Hemisphere. These satellites will be integral to the Next Generation Overhead Persistent Infrared, or OPIR, program which aims to enhance the U.S.'s capability to identify missile threats from space. With this new contract, the total value of Northrop Grumman's work on this program has increased to $4.1 billion following a previous award of $2.3 billion in 2020 for development of two satellites. The project has now entered a crucial phase, moving from design and development to the manufacturing, assembly, integration, and testing of the satellites and their corresponding ground systems. According to the schedule, the first of Northrop Grumman's satellites is expected to launch in 2028. These satellites will utilize advanced infrared sensors to detect potential missile launches. Upon detecting a threat, the satellite's communication system will quickly transmit data to ground-based stations for timely analysis and response. This contract extension follows the successful completion of design reviews for both the satellites and their ground systems. It represents a valuable opportunity for Northrop Grumman, potentially enhancing its position in the military payload manufacturing and launch market. However, only time will tell how well they will execute this contract. What are your thoughts on this development? Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.